Okay, in this video we're going to show you how to actually run a route after it's been designed in the rounds designer. So uh, here we are in the rounds designer of in this simple demonstration. I just have one route in my in my list and I've assigned it to two different people. So what I'm going to do if I was a, a data collection person, I would be going into the health solution, going down to rounds data collection. And I can see I've got one route assigned to me. And I can see that it's currently overdue. Drill into that. One thing that um, I highly recommend, unless you're planning on only collecting data in a browser, is to go into the assigned routes, selecting the route that you're going to run, and ensuring that the enable offline access is checked. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. What that does is that makes sure that when your uh, device is online, uh, the system is going to make sure that it tries to keep that in sync so that when you do go offline, all of the route information that you need to run your route will be available to you. That's a bigger issue if you're using a tablet and you're using the app, which we highly, highly recommend. So if you're going to be collecting data out in the field, you know, you can use a, an iPad, iPad mini, you can use uh, an Android device or a Windows based device. Uh, but there is an app and within that app, you make sure that you have checked this offline access. And that way, when you run your route and you go into areas that you don't have connectivity, uh, the device is going to collect that data. It's going to store it locally on the device. And then when you come back in range to the network, it's going to sense the network and it's going to go ahead and upload that information to the server so that it's it's secure and it's um, on the server where it needs to be. So now that it's offline, and the way you know that is you'll notice that this is um, this little icon over here is blue and it's um, it's kind of highlighted, meaning that it's it's selected for offline access and it's been updated recently, so it's ready to go and ready to to start using. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click on that. It's going ahead and trying to update itself. I'll go over some more of the sync issues in just a minute uh, after we go through the, some of the route features. Okay, so just to give you a little overview of the layout, uh, currently what you're in is sort of the, the checkpoint view. So you're kind of seeing um, all the information related to this particular check. So over here, you're looking at, this is the, the asset header. So that asset header is giving you the asset ID. Uh, that is configurable, so you can put, there is a way to change that to be more of a, a description of the equipment rather than an equipment number. Okay, so coming down here, these are the, the specific checkpoints that were done in Rounds Designer, and now you're the person going out in the field and you're answering these questions uh, as it relates to this particular route. So the first one says, is the equipment running? Now, this happens to be a conditional check, and the way you know that is if you look down here, it says conditional checks, and it's got five additional questions. So if I select yes, notice that these five questions pop in here. And that's because I can only do those checks when the equipment's running. If I can't, if the equipment's not running, there's no point in me seeing those because I can't, I can't collect that information. Just to demonstrate that, I'm going to go ahead and select no. And you'll see now that those kind of disappear. Uh, and they don't count against you. They don't count against your compliance. Um, uh, they're just, when you when you select an affirmative, it's going to go ahead and show them. When you say no, it's not going to show them. So for this one, let me go ahead and just say yes, just so they pop in. OK, so we have two different modes now. So a couple things that I want you to look at in this screen. First of all, if you're online, which I am at the moment, You'll notice up here that both the, the the first icon, which indicates that it's local storage, meaning that the the reading that you just took when you said yes is secured on local storage. But since you're online, it takes the opportunity to push that up to the server. Now, if you were offline and you were walking around, you didn't have connectivity, uh, you would notice that the first icon does turn blue and the second one remains gray. And that's okay because it's going to secure all your information on the device. And then when you get back to a, uh, an area that has Wi-Fi, like a control room or an office, uh, once it senses that connectivity, it's going to go ahead and push those readings up to the server. 
So don't worry if you're offline, it's going it, to, all the data will be secured on the, on the device until it's ready to push it up to the server. Okay, I'm going to go through just a couple of these questions here. Uh, as far as navigation goes, um, I'm just simply clicking around. If I was on a tablet, I would just tap on each of these, or I can click on these arrows up here. These arrows will take me to the next, what we call checkpoint. Okay, so that's the equivalent of clicking over here. Okay, so now this question says, you know, what's the um, inboard bearing uh, vibration? So I'm going to go ahead, this is a pump, so I'm going to go ahead and put in, say it's 0.10. And in this case, there's no issues. That's a, that's a legitimate value. It's an OK value, so it comes up green. Let's say in this example that it was a little bit high. Say it was about 0.27. Now it's going to tell you, hey, go ahead and write a recommendation on the handheld. The way you would do that is you'd come over here to this icon up here, up in the upper right-hand corner. And that's going to kind of give you your pull-out tab for adding recommendations. Okay, you have two different choices up here. You can add a recommendation related to this, this reading that you're taking, or you can take one that's more of a generic standalone recommendation that, you know, maybe you were out and you saw something that was, you know, it's something you want to document, but it's unrelated to the checkpoint that you're looking at. So you have the choice of picking one that is, is specific to what you're doing and one that's more generic to something maybe in the area. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just put one in here. Now by default it goes ahead and puts in the um, default text so it says you put in 0.27 and it's giving you the alert condition. Uh, you could certainly change that. Okay, and you can put in some long text here. put whatever you want. Uh, it knows what asset you're on and it will, when you hit the save, it's going to go ahead and fill in the creation date and it's also going to fill in who created the reading. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the save. Okay, and again it's going to save and as long as um, you're online it's going to push it to the server. If you're not online it will it will just save it on the device just like it does readings and then when it gets the opportunity to be online it will go ahead and push that up. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close that away. So now I've taken care of that. Now, some users uh, prefer, instead of seeing all the details like we're seeing here, some users prefer more of a, we'll call a list view. So if I click on this blue header for the asset, it changes my view to essentially show me all the checkpoints kind of in a list within this work area. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just put these in. I'll put in some values. You can see it makes some um, data entry a little quicker. Most users kind of like that. I'm going to go ahead and put a high value in here, and you'll see it also has a similar um, warning. Uh, if you want, you can actually create a, a a recommendation directly from here within the in this list view. So if you were to click here, it's the equivalent of of clicking that um, that icon up in the upper right hand corner that we did before. So I'm not going to do that, but it's the same same concept. Okay. It says, okay, is there any abnormal noise? No. Um, you check the bolts. Are they secure? Yes, they're secure. Uh, the seal water flows. Is it okay? Yep, looks good. Um, pump seal packing. Does it look okay? Yep. And I'm just going to go ahead and just answer all these very quickly. Notice that it is marking the online storage as a check. And if I pause for a minute, and I think it waits about 10 or 15 seconds. And if it sees me pause, let's say I'm walking from one equipment to another, once it senses that pause and it knows that I'm online, it's going to go ahead and push those to the server. Um, so that way it's not trying to save things while you're trying to do your work and your data entry. But it will take the opportunity when it senses a, a break in your activity to go ahead and push those up to the server. So you can see now that all the the cloud icons are 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 blue, meaning that you can feel comfortable that the data is up on the on the server. And then once you're done with your route, you come over here to the Mark Done box, and you can put some comments in. Hey, 
and you can go ahead and mark it done. Okay, it's going to ask you to close the tab, and that's it. And you can see that the the route is no longer due or overdue. It is still under your assigned routes. Okay, and when it's due again, it's going to pop up as due, and if it goes over a certain amount of time, then it will pop in as overdue. Okay, so that's um, that's really all there is to it for, for data collection. Uh, the route becomes due, you want to go ahead and mark it for offline. And then you want to go ahead and run your route, collect your data, mark it done. And once that's done, you're, you've done everything you need to do as far as the data collection that's needed on the route.